Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Kiley with FlySkins.com. In this video segment, I'm going to show you guys how to make a crease popper with the slow roller tail and the fish fins. <clears throat> what I'm going to start out here is with a 3 aught Umqua hook. It's made for uh, poppers. It's got this little bend in here that keeps the body from moving around. I'm going to use some 3 aught mono thread, and then I'm also going to use uh, some markers, uh, some bucktail, and some flashaboo. All right, so first things first, I'm going to start wrapping the hook here with the jam knot with the mono thread. I'm also going to tie in a rattle. And the rattle I'm going to use is not the glass. I'm going to use these, uh, they're a little more um, durable, these plastic fly rattles from Hairline Dubbin. These are the smalls. And how they make their noise is there's a ball bearing in the back end, and then those ball bearings hit the other ball bearing in the back. I'm going to take my mono thread, tie it in right here. This is going to help. Basically, you can use a, the sheath, um, this tubing stuff as well to hold it in, but that adds a little extra bulk, especially for this fly. It's going to be held in there quite well with the crease popper foam over top of the whole fly here in a second. So I'm going to use some super glue here and super glue actually works really well with plastics, foam and the tails and the fins that I'm about to tie. As that's drying I'm going to put a couple more wraps over that's going to help hold it in place. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, a piece of mono. This is 80 pound mono. Uh, reason I use 80 pound uh, for this application, I'm going to help hold this tail away from the body. Uh, that'll keep it from uh, fouling a lot. Especially, uh, I'm going to be using these in salt water, and uh, the winds can be pretty brutal out on the flats or, or in the salt sometimes. So there's no, not much protection out in the ocean. Um, so it's kind of nice to add this little safeguard. So I'm going to take uh, this and I'm going to extend it about an inch beyond this hook here. And this is a pretty big hook. I'm going to wrap this on here. One reason I like this 80 pound mono is because it does not really curve a whole lot. I'm going to trim off my excess here. All right, so once your mono is tied into the top of the rattle there, you can take a little bit of super glue, run it down all the way down to the end. You'll take your slow roll of tail, and you want to make sure that where the bend is, right about here, where right before it starts, that's where you want to line up the end of your um, tail or your tail to your mono there. I'm going to take this, I'm going to secure that in. I'm going to take a toothpick so I don't stick my fingers to it and literally just kind of hold it in place and that super glue will bond these two together. And then super glue works really well with latex tails um, and plastics or monofilament. And then once that's on there and cured, that thing will not come off of there very easily. It'll stay there very well. Now, why would I do that? Well, I already told you to keep it from fouling uh, in high wind situations. Another thing, um, if you add body material around uh, these tails, typically they'll stay quite well and hold it away but it's just a little security measure and there you have it that's in place once that's cured that thing is not going anywhere I'm gonna finish wrapping around here I'm gonna add a little more super glue because I'm about to lay some bucktail on here and that helps uh, hold it in place makes it more durable so I'm going to use this hot orange to kind of match the tail that I put on there. 
<clears throat> I'm going to use it on top. I'm going to use a little yellow on the side. I'm going to match that. Looks like a fire tiger design. I think that's what it's called for lures anyway. All right. Also, what I want to do is I want to make sure my the end of the fibers kind of don't go past the bend very much. The bend in the tail, that is. Because otherwise you'll limit the movement of the tail. You don't want to inhibit that. That's the whole point of putting it on there. Okay, secure that in place. Pull these up out of the way. Trim that off. Hear that rattle? All right, I'm going to take some yellow. And I'm going to tie it in on each side here. Same thing. Line it up even with those other ones. Notice I haven't put anything underneath here, which is good. When you're tying crease poppers, you want to have as much gape in the hook. Well, that's actually any fly. Uh, gape in the hook as possible. Same amount on the other side here. Same length. Tie it in. As you lay the thread around, you can kind of move your fingers back out of the way, and it'll help lay it nice and flat where you want it. Okay. Trim the excess off. And now what I want to do is I want to add some flash boo. I'm going to use some gold. About, I don't know, four to five strands, maybe six, something like that. I'm going to pull the whole segment out here so I've got them pretty long. I'm going to tie in this one side here. Just a couple big wraps to secure it in place for now. I'm going to take this other side. I'm simply going to pull it around and I'm going to create that lateral line between the colors of the yellow and the orange. Okay. A couple extra wraps here and it's tied in. Now, uh, these are a little longer than I want. I want them just to be as long as the bucktail. So I'm just going to pull it back, trim that off. Alright. Uh, one thing I do like to do for uh, crease poppers is continually add super glue between each step. Now, this will help assist make it a little bit more durable, but uh, these flies, if you hook up on a toothy critter they're only gonna last maybe if you're lucky three fish anyway okay so now I have a piece of cylinder foam here and what I want to do is step it back a little bit I'm gonna loosely wrap the front and as you get to the back it's okay if it spins around no big deal um, as it gets to the back I want to secure it a little bit better all I want to do is create that cup face in the front of the popper. That's what's going to make it bubble a lot. And this does not have to be pretty, so don't get real picky with it. You just want to create that big um, circle in the front. Now speaking of crease foam, or crease poppers when you're tying them, um, you can buy foam cutters for this application. Hairline sells several different ones. Um, or you can make your own, whatever you want to do. I made a little template a long time ago for some crease flies that I was mass producing and uh, I had some extra so playing around with those the last couple of days. I'm going to coat this piece of foam and if that stuff on the bucktail is dry just a little bit more doesn't hurt. This goes a long way. Um, now the easy thing to do here is make sure you got one of these paper clips you're going to line this up, point straight up perpendicular. You want to line your foam with right behind the eye of the hook and then fold it over. Okay, Hold on to that, rotate your vise. And then you have like a few seconds to line those up at the bottom. If you don't, no big deal, you can fix that later. Trim it. Okay, So I'm going to come in with my paper clip and I'm going to do this until it touches. Okay, Now if you have too much super glue on here, uh, it takes a little bit longer. Actually, a little less is better. So you can take your a toothpick and just run it down this edge here. And in about 
10 to 30 seconds, depends on the crease or the super glue. It'll it'll cure and be good for a long time. Okay, so just let it sit. Okay, so here we go. Take that off. You'll have a few indentations, no big deal. That will go away, my friends. All right, so if it didn't line up perfect, no big deal. You could come back in here with a razor and simply shave it flat. See? Super easy. And you're done. You don't have to get too picky. Like I said, it's not going to last that long. But they are fun to tie. You can get carried away like I have been. All right. So now I want to color it. Um, I always start with my light colors first. That way, um, you know, you, you don't uh, bleed the colors over. Also, if it, if it looks too rough for you there, if you want to clean that up, all you got to do is take a lighter, kind of skim by it real quick. Press it down, and that will fix any little imperfections. That's a little trick there. Don't breathe that in. It's toxic. All right, so... Go ahead, I'm going to make, uh, I want to leave a little bit of a white belly. Take your magic marker. I'm simply going to run it forward. If the glue is not completely cured and you get super glue on your markers, yes, you will probably ruin that particular spot on the marker. And uh, it won't work real well. I'm going to go in the back here, do this part. I don't know that it really matters to the fish, but uh, I don't know. I like mine looking good. All right, so top part, one stripe here, and I want to just kind of line it up with my bucktail where it's tied in. <clears throat> and then I want to create that... Uh, tiger looking design. I'm going to do one black stripe on the back side here. Okay. And then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to draw in my little stripes. No, I'm not a Bengals fan. Sorry. Alright, so then you take this and you can look at the top and line them up from the top. That way they're the same on both sides. I'm not sure that that matters, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, so there you have it. That's it so far. And now I'm going to add my fins. Called Kylie's Fish Fins. Go to Google, type it in. You'll see several online stores that carry them. I'm going to use the white ones, mostly because uh, that's kind of the base color I'm using right now for the um, this fly. My crease foam is white so why not use this and then I can color it whatever color I want to make it match okay so I'm gonna take an exacto knife and I'm gonna find my spot where I want to add my fins which for me is gonna be the center here of the crease and if you're lucky you can stab it all the way to the other side there and you can see where it came out same thing I'm gonna make an incision and just wide enough for uh, my tie-in tab to fit in there. I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm just going to jam that in there on both sides. Now what the fin's naturally going to want to do is stick straight out. I'll show you how to remedy that in a second. Stick it in there. Okay, so they're all kind of funky looking, but that's an easy fix. I'm going to take some more super glue. I'm going to put a little drop in the corner between the foam and the fin. Just a little tiny drop. I'm going to pull this fin back. I'm going to press pretty firm right in the corner, but I'm also going to pull up on the fin. And it's going to create this crease. And then when this cures, it's going to make that little dimple, which is kind of neat. And it's going to fold it out at the angle that I want. Roughly 45 degrees. Let go. And... And there you have it, folks. And it's not going anywhere. At all. What? Amazing. Alright.
So, same thing on the other side. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to color these fins. Okay, cool. So, my next step is to add my eyes. Now, you can use any eyes you want, whatever you want to do, but I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to making stuff, if you haven't figured that out yourself. Um, I cut these vinyl eyes myself. I did several layers. There's a iridescent, shiny layer behind the pupil. Um, and then I did, like, a bloodshot design. Unfortunately, you can't buy those. Um, but there's all kinds of cool eyes out there. Maybe if somebody wanted some, you could hit me up. But all right, so I'm gonna take this. I'm simply gonna stick it in place. Okay. Check that out. All right. Line them up. You can line them up from the bottom. Makes it a little easier because you can see both at the same time. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some UV Loon uh, Clear Fly Finish Thin and I'm going to basically uh, seal the seams of this uh, eye here. And I'm going to do it really quickly. And the reason why is because sometimes this will seep underneath and you want to hurry up and cure the edge before uh, that happens. So I'm going to hit it up real quick and then cure it. I'm going to do this all the way around. And then I'll come back in. And if it lifts a little bit, no big deal. You kind of press it down. And then you can actually hit it from an angle and get it all. Okay, now that I've done all the edges, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to fill that profile here. All right, there's that. Now what I can do, if you want to, you can come back in and add a little gill line. It's going to start at the top on one side, color it in, curve it in the same curvature roughly as the eye, come underneath, and then what's cool when you do it this way, when you finish that one line, you can come back in and reverse it, and then you get a nice symmetrical gill line on both sides. See? And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this segment of Fly Skins video. Uh, you can add any creativity you'd like to your flies. Don't be scared, folks. Thanks for watching.